Welcome, this is Zan with Repo Products. Today's video is on how to use Dynamo and Revit to calculate the room occupancy load in a Revit model. Here I am in Revit 2018.2 and I have a basic model with some rooms in here. And if we select the room object, you can see that we have a project parameter here called occupant load and it's set to zero because we need to figure what those values are. A lot of times people will um, obviously create a schedule that gives us the room names, the numbers, and that parameter value. And then they can create a calculated parameter to figure out what that is and then um, put that in there. And it takes a little bit of time to do so. In today's video, we're going to use Dynamo. So let's go ahead and open up Dynamo. <clears throat> and uh, when you're opening up Dynamo, from within Revit, it's actually creating a link between Dynamo and that Revit application session with the current Revit model open. That's why it, it takes a second or two to open up. Um, so let's go ahead and open up that script file. <clears throat> and we'll take a look at that script file. And again, uh, as you start developing and working with Revit, you'll get into um, <clears throat> the habit of trying to group things together. Uh, and this one's still, for me, a work in progress. But um, this one, <clears throat> you can see here it says room occupancy load, categorization, any model preparation content that I need. And then we start going into things like uh, what is the allowable area uh, per occupant. And right now I have it set to 15, which is an average number um, for office usage. But you can change this value to whatever you need. And then... <clears throat> It looks at the uh, project units and checks to see if it's set to square feet. And if it's not, um, it can use the standard project units, but it'll convert it if you need to. And so what this portion over here does is it calculates the occupancy load by dividing the area of the floor <clears throat> um, for that occupancy type. And so you're looking at a string of an area, and it's getting that area content, that area parameter of that room, it's converting it to square feet if it has to. If it's true or false, it does so. It divides that by um, <clears throat> the occupancy load. And over here, we have math ceiling. Uh, math ceiling is a node that basically says, um, get the value and round up. Okay. Whereas if it's math floor, which is another node, then you're rounding down to the nearest integer value. Once that information is um, obtained, then over here on this portion of the script, you can see the software is telling you to select a room to work with. It will figure out what that room element is and the name of that element, and will figure out if that room is an actual room or not. And if it's not a room, you need to select a room. Once it knows that it is a room, it grabs that data, pushes it over here, and puts that information in by joining multiple strings of room name, area, occupancy load, and so on. Okay, And in the end, once it does all of this, it outputs that data out, and you'll see a result. Now, you can either do one of two things. You can either, <clears throat> from this Dynamo player, run the script and select a room and get a result. So let me do that right now. I'll pan over here. And that's why this box is, uh, this node is an orange color. <clears throat> it's expecting you to select something. So I'll click select and head over here to the Revit model and pick a room object. Once I've done that, it knows what that element ID is. And it will run that data through this script. And if I pan over here to the end and um, I hit run, it'll run through the script and you'll get a result. And it tells you here room name, assembly A110, area in square feet, and the occupancy load. Now I'm going to close this Dynamo player. And the reason is because if I use the Dynamo player, uh, which is a little palette interface, <clears throat> We can see calculate room occupancy load script is here. 
I'm going to click this little button for editing the input. And your panel for the Dynamo player should change. <clears throat> and it gives you the name of the script. And you can edit and open it up um, and edit the inputs and actually open it up in the Dynamo script window, which is the command that we used up here. Um, we have it set for a true or false condition. Um, <clears throat> if it's set to false, then it'll be converted to square feet. And you can obviously put in the allowable area occupancy factor right here. So if I click select right now, it says it's waiting for me to select something in Revit. So again, if I pick something else, say gathering A, then I hit run. It'll run and it'll give me that data. And it says 40. So we know that the um, occupancy load for assembly A and for gathering has been calculated out. However, um, if we look at that room object, we can see that that information is not pushed into the object itself. So this particular video is on how to use Dynamo to just obtain the data. I'm going to create another video shortly that you can watch that will push the data into the Revit model and push it out to Excel. Thank you very much for watching.